All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a cladogram yourself from what's called a matrix. So to make a, a, a cladogram, there's a couple of vocabulary words you should know. First of all, the most primitive organism in a cladogram, the organism that has the least number of traits, maybe they have none of the traits, they're called the outgroup. You should know that. You could always be asked who's the outgroup in a cladogram on the AP exam. I've seen this multiple times. Also, if your cladogram starts with a trait, it's possible that the cladogram, there's a trait that was there prior to the cladogram starting, and that's called a primitive character, or like characteristic, or a primitive trait. And then all the rest of the traits in your cladogram are going to be called derived characters. They are traits that appeared at some point in evolution, and everybody after that point shows the trait. So let me show you how these words sort of fit into our definitions. So for example, if you look here at, this is what we call a matrix. And the matrix is going to have organisms on uh, one side and traits or characters, characteristics on the other. Now this could be flip-flopped. In this case, the organisms are on the top. So notice that the lancelet, our first organism, has no traits. He would be called the outgroup. It's possible the outgroup has one trait, but whoever you list first, whoever's the most primitive, like this one right here, here's your lancelet, that's considered your outgroup. They will always tell you also what the zeros and ones mean. It could be pluses and minuses. It could be zeros and ones. One would mean they have it. Zero means they don't. Plus means they have the trait. Zero means they don't. Um, and the traits could also be numbered instead of being uh, listed in words. So going back really quick to the homework sheet, um, I don't know that there's a clear outgroup on this, but this could be like a cladogram, and the numbers could be traits. So the primitive trait would be three. This is a trait, a primitive character or a primitive trait. Everybody has. Um, and then the rest of the traits in this cladogram would be called derived traits. In other words, trait number five appeared after three, and organisms A and B both share trait five. Um, trait 9 is a derived trait, and everything after that has trait 9. So these would be derived characters, and 3 would be a primitive character. Now remember, this does not tell us necessarily time. Like, you can't assume that 5 and 9 appeared at the same time. It's really important. Unless it's labeled time somewhere on your cladogram, you really don't know when the traits appeared. You don't know what happened before something else. So 9 and 5 did not necessarily appear at the same time. We do know 7 obviously came after 9, and 3 had to come before 9, because those literally track back to one another. So I just wanted to throw that in there really quick. Now, going back to our PowerPoint, so here's another picture of a cladogram. Again, the hagfish in this one is an outgroup. He's the most primitive. And then after him, you can see that everybody has jaws. And then the perch is here. Then everybody past the perch has lungs. Um, everybody past, you know, the bird has fur and mammary glands. Also, a couple of other things. The bird is the only one with feathers. So notice how that trait is not on the main line. That trait is unique to birds. And finally, really important, the mouse and the chimp could be flip-flopped here. There's no reason why the mouse has to be before the chimp. There's nothing distinguishing them. They're equally related to the bird. Um, the mouse is not closer related just because it's listed closer. Since there's no trait separating or distinguishing these, technically you could put the chimp here and the mouse here. All right, so let me show you how to make one of these. So here's one. Everybody that has the trait has a 1, and whoever doesn't have the trait has a 0. So always your first step, and you can't do anything if you don't know how to start, your first step is that you're either looking for a primitive character, meaning a trait that everybody has, so a trait with all ones, or you are looking for um, an outgroup, an organism that has all zeros. And you can't have both of these things. You're either going to have a trait that everybody shares or an organism that has no traits. So if we look at this for uh, example, our traits are across the top. Is there a trait everybody has? Yes, there is. Over here. Multicellular is a trait everybody has. So we're going to put multicellular, and it doesn't have to be at an angle like this. Um, 
but this is sort of the most common way that I draw them, and you'll, you'll see them this way a lot. Honestly, on the AP exam, most of the time they'll give you the framework anyway, and you're just filling in the, the, the information. But as long as it matches the matrix, the picture, the, the graph, um, you're good. Now, we cross off multicellular. Now, the way this is going to work is you're going to go back and forth. In other words, now that we've done a trait, we're going to look for an organism that now has all zeros past this point, because that's going to be our most primitive organism. So we're always looking for organisms with the most zeros, and then traits everybody has. So if I look through my organisms, I see that the sponge has all zeros once I cross off multicellular. So that's going to be my first organism here, the sponge. Now that I've crossed off the sponge, I'm going to go back to traits again. So is there a trait everybody else has now that the sponge is gone? And there is, tissues. So that's going to be my next trait, tissues. All right, now we're going to look for an organism. So we go back and forth, trait, organism. Is there an organism now that has all zeros once tissues are crossed off? And there is the flatworm. So that's next, flatworm. All right, now we're going back to traits. Is there a trait now that everybody has? And yes, there is a one-way digestive tract. So I'm just going to write one way here just to speed things along. One-way digestive tract. Now, again, back to organisms. The next organism would be our roundworm, has all zeros. So that's going to be next, roundworm. Probably going to run out of space here. Um, now we're looking for a trait, again, that everybody has. And I see the next one is called a coelom. That's how that's pronounced. So coelom. And again, I'm, I did not plan this well, so I'm going to run out of space. Our next trait. We're look, uh, sorry, we're looking for an organism now, would be the earthworm. The earthworm has all zeros. So now we're going to put earthworm. I'll just put earth. He's going to, again, I'm going to run out of space. Um, our next trait is jointed legs here. Everybody has. So jointed legs. Um, and then our next organism would be our spider. Uh, and then our last trait would be metamorphosis, and then our butterfly. And I want to show you this one here. All right. So, starting with either an organism or a trait, the millipede has none of the characteristics. So millipede is going to go first. Now we're going to a trait. Is there a trait everybody has? Yes. Trait 2 is shared by everybody. So I'm going to add trait 2. Now, here's where it can get a little sticky. Is there an organism with all zeros? No, there is not an organism with all zeros. So here's what you're going to look for. Is there an organism that has mostly zeros and the trait that they do have is unique to them? And the answer is yes, the body louse. He has almost all zeros. And the one trait that he does have, trait six, he's the only one with it. So you do this, body louse. And trait 6 is unique just to him. Cross off trait 6 and the body louse. And now from here on out, this should be easier. So uh, next trait everybody has is trait 1. Now would come the assassin bug. Because he has nothing past trait 1. Now we're going back to traits. Trait 4 everybody has. I know I'm going quick. Um, Next would come the beetle. He has nothing past trait four. And then, now notice another little thing here. Traits three and five are exactly the same. So what you're going to do in that case is you're going to literally separate them with a comma. We don't know which one appeared first, so we just put them with a comma. Now, what you don't want to do, the B and the AN are also exactly the same. They have exactly the same traits in common. What you don't want to do is put a comma for them, though. So for them, you would do this, B and ant. Does it matter which one you put on top and which one you put there? No, it actually does not make a difference. You could flip-flop those. So this is what this one would look like when completed. Um, this is the hardest difficulty level that you might see on a quiz for me. And probably on the AP exam, again, whenever they've given these, for the most part, they have um, given a template and you just filled it out. I do want to show you this one last thing, if I don't run out of time here. 
This one looks really weird. This is from an old AP exam. They asked some questions about this. So notice it's got organisms and organisms. And there was a whole explanation that this was showing amino acid differences between organisms. A couple of questions they asked. Who is the out group in this? Well, if in the out group, you would be looking for the most amino acid differences. So if I compare these organisms to each other, for example, the donkey to the chicken, the chicken to the penguin, the donkey to the horse, the one with the most differences is the snake. He's totally different from everybody. So my out group would be the snake. Another question that was asked about this picture was, who's the most closest relative to the chicken? Well, if I look at the chicken, I can compare him to the horse and the donkey here. And then I can also compare the chicken to the snake and the penguin here. And the least amino acid differences would be between the chicken and the penguin. So the answer would be that the, most close, the closest relative to the chicken would be the penguin. Um, and finally, you were actually asked to draw a tree. This was a very old AP question. I have not seen something like this in a really long time. Honestly, the easiest thing to do, you want your snake to be the out group. So somewhere down at the bottom, the snake. And again, this could be sloppy. I'm going to make it really sloppy just to show you this was absolutely fine. The horse and the donkey only have one difference between them. So they'd go here together. And then finally, since the chicken and the penguin were somewhere in the middle, but they were really close to each other, you could put them sort of like this, chicken and penguin. Again, this is super sloppy. It doesn't look like a nice, pretty cladogram, but this was absolutely perfect for what they were looking for. I just had to sort of match up with the data and show that the chicken and the penguin were very closely related to each other. That was important. That the horse and the donkey were most closely related to each other and that the snake should be somewhere far away because he was much less related to the others. So this is not on the quiz we're gonna take, but I wanted to show it to you since it's something, if you saw a weird matrix like this on the AP exam, so you'd know what it meant.